Hello Leo Rising, welcome to your February 2021 Astrology and Tarot reading. My name is Tessa, you're watching my channel. Um, I do have a couple things to say before I get started. I have um, been working on a website, tessataboo.com, and it's almost finished. It is pretty much done. I'm just figuring out the logistics of the blog portion of it. Um, the, the way that they have the layout set up is a little bit confusing, so I'm just kind of figuring that out, but everything else is, is, is finished. So, And the blog portion is kind of like the most important part of my site. That's actually the main reason why I wanted to do a website, um, is so I could have a blog, um, and I can like write out uh, stuff for you guys as well related to tarot astrology. I do have the February tarot scope for all the zodiac signs already written out. So I do have my first post and I have lots of ideas for posts for the future. Um, I love to write and <clears throat> anything that is involved in um, occultish or, you know, psychology, the unconscious, um, Things like that, like I'm always going to be interested in writing about. So you can kind of expect things of that nature on my blog. You know, it could be related to tarot, it could be related to astrology, uh, it could be related to spirituality, the mind, um, the human condition, the human experience. Um, and then that's the other reason why I'm rocking my pink Freud shirt that I got on Amazon. I used to study psychology and I am definitely all about integration of the shadow, integration of <clears throat> the different parts of ourselves that we tend to hide from um, reality, that we tend to hide from ourselves, that we tend to hide from others, um, the parts of ourselves that we don't show, but that are beautiful parts of ourselves and that make us whole human beings, um, that... Um, you know, really make us who we are. You know, a lot of the times we tend to only show one side of ourselves uh, to society and to the world. And unfortunately, the more that we repress um, and we don't express ourselves, the more that we keep other things um, hidden, the, the more, um, the more those energies can come out and spill out in other ways, okay? So it's kind of like this underlying subconscious kind of shadow energy. Uh, we we all have the this shadow energy and um, I don't know, in my personal opinion, I think that it's important to integrate the shadow. It's important to integrate the shadow because it's a fundamental part of the human experience um, to learn and to understand um, others through the shadow, I think, advances um, our potential for relating and for uh, drawing bridges with one another and forming deeper connections with one another, okay? So, yeah, that's kind of my whole spiel. Um, Freud is kind of known to be the godfather of psychology. He, um, he represents, to me, the unconscious mind, the shadow self, the deeper um, things that we are driven by, our instincts, our, uh, our passion, our drive, basically, uh, there are things that we are driven by that we are not even aware of sometimes, you know. Um, and usually those drives stem from some deeper, um, some deeper truth. So yeah, that's my little spiel. So I am working on the blog. Hopefully I will have figured it out by February. Um, is there anything else I want to say? Um, no, I don't think there's anything else I want to say. <laughs> so I'm going to get into the astrological portion of your reading. 
Um, so we're going to talk about some of the bigger energies that are in effect right now in our solar system and what area of your life these energies are affecting. And then I'm going to get it into the oracle and the tarot reading and we're going to see how those cards relate to your astrological chart. So I am using this um, fancy little chart that I made myself. Um, okay, so Leo, uh, the bigger energies that we have going on right now is going to be Aquarius energy. Um, the Sun is in Aquarius currently. Mercury is in Aquarius. Venus is going to be in Aquarius February 1st. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter are both in Aquarius as well. They are technically still conjunct. I think they're like five degrees apart, but Jupiter is moving a little like further away. And then on February 11th, we're going to have a new moon in Aquarius. Okay, so that's going to be six different astrological planets in Aquarius on February 11th. Okay, um, so in the February, so these, so these are definitely um, the bigger energies that are in effect. Um, Jupiter and Saturn is going to be in Aquarius pretty much for the whole year, except for when Jupiter goes into Pisces for a few months. Uh, actually, I don't even think it's a few months. I think it's shorter than that. But um, but for the month of February, these are the big energies, okay? And this is transiting your seventh house of personal relationships, partnerships, um, and balance and harmony. Um, So there could be some like a lot of mental activity in regards to how you view your personal relationships and partnerships. There could be some inspired um, communication in regarding if you are in a relationship. Um, the seventh house natural ruler is Libra. Okay, so it is going to be in regards to uh, these these aspects of Libra. So because um, because Aquarius is air energy and Libra is air energy, it's going to be just like thinking a lot of mental and intellectual uh, kind of activity, inspired activity in regards to personal relationships, partnerships. So whether you're in a relationship or whether you're in like a business partnership, um, it could be kind of a very inspiring kind of time uh, for you to maybe exchange ideas with your significant other or your partner um, and to just start thinking in a more uh, progressive and revolutionary kind of ways, okay, as you're um, developing your relationship and expanding upon it. The other big energies that are going on is going to be Mars in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus. So Mars is the planet of drive, instinct, um, aggression. Um, Uranus is the planet of revolution, reform, um, innovation, and uh, technology, networking. So with this being in Taurus, Taurus is the sign of personal possessions, values, and stability. Um, and it transiting your 10th house. 10th uh, house is going to be the area of your life uh, related to your work, career, social status, um, and even like authority figures. So there could be some really unexpected um, things kind of happening in relation to your work environment or your career, um, just like sudden changes, sudden shifts, um, where you have to um, think about um, your future stability. You have to think about how this plays into your um how it plays into your long-term stability, your long-term security, your possessions, your values, and, you know, really getting to the root of what it is you value. Maybe what it is you value about the job. You know, what are your core um, traditions in regards to why you are in the career that you're in, why you're doing what you're doing, okay? And if it's not in line with those core values, maybe how can you change that or what can you do to, to start taking the necessary steps towards um, aligning your future more with your personal values. Okay, and then um, the other big energy we have going on is going to be Neptune in Pisces. Neptune has been in Pisces for a while already. It's going to be in Pisces for a little while longer. I don't know the exact dates, so I'm sorry. 
that this is a very deep underlying energy that is connecting all of humanity right now in a very boundless, excuse me, in a very boundless spiritual, unconditional love, like um, very uh, creative kind of way. Okay, Pisces, Neptune and Pisces, the fact that Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces and the fact that these two uh, symbols represent unconditional love, spirituality, art, creativity, um, just like very boundless emotional energy, okay? Imagine a stream of water, okay? That's very Piscean, like a river, a stream of water that's just kind of like flowing through, flowing pretty quickly because Pisces is a mutable sign. So just imagine like a river flowing um, through a bank, you know, with like a forest on both sides and then you just have kind of like a bank of water flowing. Okay, and this is the water. This is the energy that connects all of us even when we um, are on opposing sides. Okay, so let's say like on one side of the river you have someone who has a certain opinion about something and then on the other side you have somebody on the exact opposite side of the spectrum. We're seeing this theme playing out a lot right now in the world. People are on opposing sides. Things are divided, especially in the United States of America. There's a lot of division, but there is a like stream. There is a network of an undercurrent of unconditional love that is pulling all of humanity forward and into the future. And we all have this like kind of access to this, um, to this stream. And it's very, um, it's, it's very like boundless, you know, it, it makes us feel like we are, are very much connected to each other, even if we're different, like we all have different backgrounds. We all come from different, whether it's culture or country or ethnicity, um, but there are some underlying things that tie people together and that is like creativity, art, spirituality. So all the things that Neptune and Pisces represents is what is going to keep humanity connected. So this is an energy that's not as noticeable, um, but we all have access to it. We're all able to tap into it. And this is transiting your eighth house and the eighth house original ruler is Scorpio. This is going to be the house that represents um, sex, death, rebirth, your unconscious mind transformation and other people's money. Um, so there could be a lot of like deeper transformative kind of things happening for you here. Um, very, very, uh, um, you know, a deeper kind of sense of this, of this creative energy, a deeper sense of this unconditional love um, that's really rooting you in your ability to see the deeper meaning of everything that's going on right now. Okay, so then for the other big energy, we have Pluto. Pluto is the planet of transformation, death, and rebirth. Um, and that is in Capricorn. Pluto is going to be in Capricorn until 2024. Capricorn is the sign of um, hard work, ambition, goals, um, authority. And this is in your sixth house. Um, the sixth house is natural ruler is Virgo. And the sixth house is going to represent your daily routines. Aww. Uh, your health, your analytical mind, and the details, the details of everyday life, the details of whatever it is that you're doing. So with Pluto and Capricorn in your sixth house, this is a kind of transformation in regards to your daily activities, your daily life, and how you take care of yourself, how you take care of your mind, um, how you look at the details of things, are you working hard towards creating a daily kind of atmosphere and routine for yourself that's going to benefit you long term? Um, so it's really kind of changing your perspective of what you need to work hard at in order to live a, 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 a happier, balanced life, okay? So those are the big energies taking place. And then we have um, kicking off the month, February 1st, there's going to be, is going to be the moon in Libra. Um, so kicking off the month with the moon in Libra, this is in your third house of short distance travel, friendship, um, siblings, uh, neighbors, communication, and just like learning, you know, just being kind of a student of life, student of information. So with, um, with 
the month kicking off with a Libra moon, um, it's going to be a really good time to set the intention to remain balanced throughout the month, okay? To remain balanced within yourself and within your friendships and just like within the realm of communication, like really using deductive reasoning, um, really being able to look at the information that you take in and to, and to not allow it to consume you, but to allow yourself to reflect on it so you can have a more balanced perspective of the things that are going on around you, like in your immediate surroundings. Um, and just keep yourself balanced in the sense of being able to reflect on the information you take in instead of just taking it in at face value. Um, on February 27th, there's going to be a full moon in Virgo, and this is going to be in your second house of personal possessions, values, and stability. Um, so towards the end of the month, you could really, your mind could really start to be triggered in reference to, um, you, you could start to think, oh, like overthink and overanalyze um, in regards to your uh, long-term stability and your and what it is you value. It could really trigger you to to really like reconsider your your values and how you approach those values in in reference to long term stability. Okay, so those are the planetary transits. Um, hopefully, everything kind of made sense. Um, I am gonna jump into the um, oracle and tarot reading, and we're gonna go from there and see what we got. I am using the Enchanted Map Oracle. <sighs> okay, so we have Moonlight. Um, who else had this? Maybe Capricorn? I'm trying to, I, I don't remember. So we have Moonlight. So that made me think of that Virgo energy, okay? So that full moon that's happening at the end of the month. Um, I feel like this is going to be a really, really important time for you. It's going to be like your mind might be like a little extra stimulated around the end of the month. You could really start to be thinking very deeply, very intuitively, very um, analytically about your long-term stability, okay? Magical map shifter. Ooh, I like this. So this is interesting. I kind of, I don't know why, but uh, Aries came to me when I thought of the magical map shifter. I was kind of thinking of this 10th house energy, but then for some reason I started thinking of Aries, magical map shifter. Maybe you're moving, okay? You could start to think like after this contemplation at the end of the month about your long-term stability, you might start to consider moving to another location, okay? Especially if you're not really, because this full moon energy is related to your 10th house, it's related to your 10th house of work, yeah, because it's squared. So you could you could really start to consider moving to another location, like just taking um, taking action. Okay, magical map shifter, um, being inspired. Like as you think about your long term stability, you, like you become inspired to take action towards a, a new direction. So maybe moving like literally moving, like out of state, moving to a completely different location, or literally going in a completely different direction than where you've been going. Like completely different direction, okay? I'm getting that very strongly. Mountain. And there's like an under, there's an understanding that you're gonna have to like overcome some like challenges, 
um, that there are going to be obstacles in doing this, but I feel like you don't care or you're ready or you're like, okay, if I have to climb a mountain, I'll climb a freaking mountain. That's fine. <laughs> you know, like that, that strong, courageous Leo energy. Like, just like, okay, like you're ready for a new adventure. You're like, you're up for the challenge. Okay, I'm, I'm getting the feeling like you're up for the challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Hiccups. All right, let's pull tarot cards. So we have the moon, a lot of um, people are getting the moon. And I feel like I always have to explain it in the same way. Uh, just because the image of this card I think is so amazing and beautiful and I think it really represents life really well right now. And I do think of this more connected to the eighth, to your eighth house because that's where Neptune is. The moon in tarot is represented by the sign Pisces and your and Pisces rules your eighth house of the unconscious um, so there is a deeper deeper reflection of things that are going on within you right now like you're there's there's a sense of you being very deeply connected to this um, to this like unconscious stream to this to this like spiritual unconditional love like creative um kind of energy that's flowing there's there's a sense that you're very deeply connected to it in a very very spiritual kind of way um and it's like you're just crossing that bridge you're crossing that bridge and you're moving on there's there's a this is interesting because a lot of other zodiac signs got this card and the way that I'm reading it for you guys is a little bit different. I feel like you actually understand the balance between the world of illusions and the world of dreams, okay? Like like you see you see the truth of it. Like you um you understand both sides. You understand that deeper reflection that's within you and you also see the outer illusion like or like how that reflection is being projected outward into the world around you and you're kind of in the middle and you're just like moving you're crossing that bridge and you're looking at the moon and you understand that the moon the way that you perceive the moon is like a reflection of yourself kind of Okay, so there's like a deeper knowing um, that you are in between worlds, okay, in this, in that sense, between like the spiritual world and the material world. So that's really interesting. Five of coins, um, Mercury and Taurus, this is your 10th house, yeah, so... I just get the sense that you're not really satisfied with your current work, your current career, your current position. You're not getting the you're not getting the spiritual fulfillment that you need. You're not receiving spiritual fulfillment. Um, and it's kind of like you're looking for a way out. Um, or like it's kind of just making you feel more, uh, like, I don't know, like you're not living up to your fullest potential with your current situation. You're not living up to your fullest ideal of yourself. We have justice. Okay, this is Libra energy, and this is in your third house. Okay, yeah, so... This is what I was talking about in reference to being able to balance out the information 
that you receive on a on a regular basis the things that are being spoken to you or communicated to you from your initial immediate surroundings being able to take that information and being able to balance out what's what and not like not allow maybe like the bullshit to affect you and to be on the side of justice to be on the side of like justice of your own soul like like to be a source of truth and balance and harmony for your own well-being by being able to like not just take in bullshit or to not just accept whatever is being communicated to you okay and just kind of being able to decipher what's what king of coins is Taurus energy yeah so you're just like you're ready to create the stability the long-term stability and security that you are dreaming of that you are searching for you know it's going to take time you know it's going to be a steady process but you're going there like the turtle slow and steady wins the race okay um, you know that you're going to get there um, you're not like worried about it like you know you're gonna get there you know what you're after and it's going to happen there's really a there's a big sense of divine timing um, that I'm getting from this card Queen of Wands is Aries energy once again ninth house long distance travel so I do feel like there's gonna be traveling or moving okay um, I definitely feel like you're gonna just ins you're you're going to be that instigator, um, that pioneer uh, for your the next phase of your life. You are going to pave the way forward, um, and I definitely see this in regards to a move, like you moving somewhere um, or just traveling somewhere long distance for like inspiration. You know, and kind of coming back with an, a renewed sense of, of hope. The sun. This is your energy, Leo. Yeah. So you're, he, you are just on your, you're on your path to happiness. You know. You're just, you're, you're on your path to happiness. That's, I, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Your reading is really, really straightforward. Um, there's not really much else I can say about the sun. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. I feel like, you know, you are, this is what's guiding you. The sun is guiding you. Joy, vitality. And then we have the two of cups. This is Venus and Cancer. And we have Cancer in your 12th house of spirituality, spiritual fulfillment, Finding your kindred spirit, finding your soulmate, and just, you know, living a, a life between the two of you and like living a spiritual life and being emotionally, feeling emotionally balanced, okay, within yourself and within your own soul. Okay, so if this is not, if you are not somebody who wants a partner, if you are someone who likes to be alone, this is you um, like loving yourself and getting in touch with your spiritual uh, side. If this is you with your partner or uh, with a potential future partner, this is kind of like what you're looking for ultimately is spiritual, um, it's, like, it's like a spiritual love. A spiritual love and comfort you want to feel at home with someone uh, you want to feel safe and secure um, you want there to be spiritual balance emotional balance um, and uh, yeah all of that so Leo this is your reading for February 2021 I hope this helped and I'll see you next time